What's going on everybody? Trevor Wilson here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch. It's that time of the year. It's the end of the year, which means we're going to be talking about my favorite whiskeys of 2023. We got 10 bottles that I absolutely love and they made my list. Now, my list does not comprise of BTAC and LE this, LE that. Uh, in fact, looking at the, the bottles over here, only one of them was pretty dang hard for people to get. The rest, not so much. To me, 2023 was like the year of LEs. It just seemed like everyone was just dropping limited edition this and that and whatever, and you just can't get it. Also, I've tried a lot of bottles, but if I do not have them, then I'm not gonna put them on the list. Uh, I got to try a lot of great things, but I could not get my hands on them like majority of people. So who cares if we talk about how good it was? Remember to like the video, subscribe if you are new here, and leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite whiskeys of 2023 were. So let's get right into this. We have a lot of bottles to talk about. The first two bottles, both coming from Heaven Hill. It would not be a best whiskey of the year list if we did not talk about Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and the specific batch I am referring to, the C923, the 13 year, seven month Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It's good, it's really good. I would say that it kind of felt like we were going back in time. This was kind of similar to batches that we tried back in the day, just so much darker flavors with that, you know, assuming 13 year age statement had a little uh, to say with how it tastes, but really, really good batch. Brought me back to the good old days. Um, it was no competition when I side by sided the A123, the B523, and the C923. The C923 was the clear winner between the three. So that is why this one made my list. And the other bottle coming from Heaven Hill which might be my favorite over the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Shocking, huh? This year's Larceny C923 batch just really hit my spot and very impressed. I have been loving the Larceny Barrel Proof releases uh, the past year, maybe a little over a year. The first couple of batches to me were rough. They were rough and they've gotten better and better and better, and then we've landed on this, and my palate freaking loves this. It's very dark, and I like it. It kind of reminds me of the, of the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof of Larceny Barrel Proof. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I think this was a hitter. This was such a hitter release. Easily the best Larceny Barrel Proof batch I think they didn't come out with, so. Uh, this list is in no particular order, forgot to mention that, but just for fun, I, I, I might be that guy who is reaching for this one over the Elijah Craig. Call me crazy. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's bring this one out because this is pretty weird and it's kind of crazy that it made my list. It is the Whiskey Gypsy. Eric Church's whiskey has made my list. Yeah, a celebrity country star. Making Trev's list, heck. Thoroughly surprised by this. Uh, this, the the way that the, it, this doesn't taste like anything you will have tried. I'm telling you, it was so unique and that was a breath of fresh air to me. The blend on this thing's crazy. There's a 99% corn that's seven and eight years old. There's a, a 20 year old Canadian rye and then an American single malt, like it just, it's like a deconstructed bourbon. You take all of the parts that makes a bourbon a bourbon and you go get the craziest thing of each. It just a little Frankenstein bottle and it, it's incredible. I also like that it wasn't just, you know, most celebrity whiskeys are like, oh, we just sourced X amount of barrels and we're throwing our name on it and give me your money. They actually got a guy, Ari, who we did a video, we did an interview. So check that out really, really insightful and awesome. Uh, but he came in here and masterminded this thing and it's created something very unique and delicious. Again, not cheap. That's probably my biggest problem with it is the price of 200 bucks. It's a lot. 
but <laughs> I mean, honestly, most celebrity things start out at that price and they're nowhere near as this good. So at least it's delicious for the price. So if you're in that kind of the ballpark, you're cool with that kind of money. I think this is a very unique, fun tasting <laughs> whiskey. It's just incredible. And the bottle itself, really cool um, marketing. Whew, we're talking a lot. We, we're not even halfway. Let's keep her rolling the next bottle on my list. Kind of cheating, but not really. Evans and Pike Reserve Solera Bourbon. I say it's cheating because they offered us X amount of bottles, 60 bottles or so, uh, to be able to put our faces on it and to offer it directly to you guys. But this is a bottle that they release each year. This is the 2023 release of the Evans and Pike. It is a Solera blend. The oldest stuff in this blend is 23 years old, and I believe the youngest is 10, somewhere around there. Um, in layman's terms of what Solera blend is, is imagine a huge vat of whiskey, and at the end of the year, they pull out X amount of bottles, and then they fill the vat with other barrels. So in essence, it's a never ending supply of the same whiskey. You know, there's no actual way to know how much of the 23 year old stuff that went into the blend is somehow in this bottle. I don't think there's a way of knowing. All I can tell you is how good this tastes. What I can tell you is whatever age ended up blessing this bottle is very evident, very high age in the proof. Just imagine a 15, 16, 17 year old tasting bourbon at 62% alcohol, cask strength goodness. That's what we got here. Again, this was another one, a little pricey, but then again, if you take what it tastes like in terms of the age, I mean, a 15 year old bottle of bourbon starts at $150 nowadays, if not more. And this is all there at 15, if not much higher tasting. So this is just very good stuff. I'm fortunate enough for them to allow us to bring 60 of these bottles directly to you guys. We s sell it on our online store. Check that out. Also, before we finish this bottle up, another point to bring out just about bourbon in general. There are so many bottles and companies. I had never even heard of Farm and Spirit until we reached out to do a pick with them and turns out they have incredible stuff. So there are so many brands out there doing incredible things and, and you know, it's hard to siphon through all of them, but there's really, really good stuff out there. So give people a chance, even if you've never heard of them. Let's keep it moving. The next bottle is one that is no stranger to my lists. Penelope. This is Penelope Barrel Strength. This is the private select. Something they did this year, they dropped this nine year age statement version, okay? It's amazing. I've been killing this bottle. It's nothing over the top, don't get me wrong, but as a Penelope fan, I mean, I like this better than their regular barrel straight. It, this is Penelope stuff, but nine years age dated, like how is that gonna be worse? It is a four grain, 85% corn, 10% rye, 2% wheat, and 3% malted barley, distilled in Indiana and Kentucky. So there's nine year old Kentucky and Indiana in this blend. And I mean, it's just so crushable. It's, you just pour it and you wanna keep going and going and going and going and going. It was like the same price as the regular barrel strength stuff. To me, this was a no brainer to try and then I freaking fell in love with it. Um, if you like Penelope, I think they, they took this blend and created something very, very good. All right, let's keep her moving. The next bottle is another mastermind blend with some Indiana stuff and who knows what else is in there. Barrel, this is batch 35, this dropped over the summer 2023. Well, it says where it was distilled right here. Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee whiskeys went into this blend. This bottle had so much of this citrusy notes that came out, it was the perfect summer pour. I mean, shoot, I still drink it, but summertime when this 
released. They knew what they were doing. They knew they knew what they were doing. I mean, for being 117.5 proof, you could take a glass of this, go sit in the summer heat, and it was refreshing. Just so much of this, these bright citrus notes, tons of orange and lime and melon, and it, it was kind of crazy. I've been loving all of the batches that they've been doing, these barrel batches. 33, 34, and 35 were all incredible batches. I just freaking love all of them. Uh, but I think this one really stood out for when it was released versus the notes. I think it complemented each other so well. It was just very fun, very delicious bottle. Four more bottles, holy moly. All right, let's move on. Two bottles of rye. Made my list, and they're both from the same distillery. <laughs> the first one might be shocking, I know. Jack Daniels Bonded Rye, again. This is not like the best tasting thing ever, but it is very affordable and it's always there on the shelf. What else could you ask for? I don't need to go wait in line. I can just go pick this up and it's good. What Jack Daniels has been doing with these bonded products, they've been coming out with the bonded bourbon, the triple mash, now the rye, it's just needed. People need to do that. I feel like everyone else, instead of coming out with core products that are always there and at a good quality, delicious, and affordable, they're putting out LE after LE after LE and the price is doubling, tripling, going out the window. You know what? Screw that. I don't like that. Jack Daniels, they can put out some LEs. They can do that. But then they put this out on the shelf too. Banana and chocolate for days. Kind of reminds me of an old Forrester rye, which that would be a pretty good comparison, to be honest, do a little battle. Maybe we should do that. It's just simple and delicious, and you can't ask for more, you know? The next rye, go figure, is just the older brother. The Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. I don't know exactly when these came out, to be honest. I don't know if this came out in what year, this is that. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's new to me. This one I got in 2023 and wow, simply incredible stuff. I mean, let's face it, Jack Daniels Barrel Proof anything is just, mm, it's just the full package. They took the Jack Daniels Limited Release Rye and then I think they just packaged it to everyone. They said, you know what? Everyone needs to try this and bam, they came out with this didn't miss. It's seriously, it's like Jack Daniels bonded rye on copious amounts of steroids. Fantastic. Tons of chocolate, tons of banana. This is a bourbon lover's rye type of thing, okay? It's quintessential Jack Daniels, but just full flavor bomb for days. It's a safe bet if you come across one that it's worth buying, okay? All right, we're down to the last two bottles. I'm saving the, the rare one for last, sorry. But I think some of you might already know what that one's gonna be. The next one is a local bottle, local distillery, Rocktown. They just dropped this cigar batch out of freaking nowhere and kind of blew my mind. Perfect bottle for the holidays. This is when it came out, was around uh, Thanksgiving. Could not have come at a better time. This is a straight bourbon whiskey finished in Ambarana casks. That is another thing that we've seen a ton of in 2023 is everybody's doing Ambarana finished of some sort. The issue is some of them overdone, way overdone. Ambarana is very strong and it will take over the whiskey quick, fast, and in a hurry. You gotta do it right. I mean, I'm sure people love it over the top, but it is very sweet. Diabetes inducing sweet. What they did with this one, I, wizardry. I don't know. I don't know how they got it so good. And I don't know, I, I typically wouldn't call Ambarana stuff cigar batch or blend or cigar anything, but I just think the mix of the bourbon they used and the Ambarana seriously gives me some sort of Joseph Magnus cigar blend vibes to it. That just very tobacco note. 
perfect for a cigar type whiskey, but then that Ambarana envelops all of that in this sweet cinnamon roll icing blanket. Just very soft, it is definitely there, but is not the star of the show. I think that's why they decided to call it the Cigar Batch, because the Ambarana is not what you get this for, okay? It's there, but it's, they did it right. So very, very happy with this one. Delicious bottle, 38 months old. Kind of insane that they're they're doing that. Just incredible stuff. Rockdown, I freaking love you. Love all your stuff. Support local businesses too. All right, that leaves one bottle on my list. Do you have any guesses what it might be? You are probably correct. Maker's Mark Cellar Age. Do you know Maker's Mark's gonna make my list? It's got to. This is the 11 and 12 year old blend Maker's Mark at a very, what's the proof? 57.8, 115.7. Very high proof for a Maker's Mark, and this thing just made me happy. Definitely the oak is there. It's very evident. Um, the only other comparison that I have found that was kind of similar to this was also a bottle you can't just go and get anymore, and it's one of the Maker's Mark DNA series. They had various um, proofed Maker's Mark, and they were all at eight years old. I believe it was, I think the 120 proof and the 125 proof. Similar, it's in the wheelhouse. It was, I could tell there was age to them, uh, but this takes it to the next level of just full blown, this is aged Maker's Mark. And it, it kind of blows my mind that they wouldn't have done this sooner. They, they give the story of how, well, it just doesn't taste good at that age and we don't like it. And so we're not gonna do it. Why don't you let us decide? And we did, and I have decided that I love it. Now, I only got this bottle because of people out there who watch me. I have not even seen one in a raffle in a store around here. These were pretty hard to get. So this is the rarest one to me. This is like the rarest thing I've gotten this year. Now, is this my favorite bottle of the year? Eh, I don't know, I could probably I'd probably pick some of these over this one, but for what this is, as a maker's enthusiast, as a maker's lover, I think this was absolutely needed in the maker's lineup, and I absolutely love it. I love how different it is compared to all of the other stuff that they've put out. So I'm happy with it. I'm glad I got it. I'm glad you guys helped me get one. So yeah, Maker's Mark, you knew it was on here. You knew it. There we have it. That is all 10 whiskeys that made my best of list. Let me know down below what you think of the list. If I'm crazy, what is your favorite bottle from the year? What would your list look like? Go to the comment section. Let's start a conversation down there. Let people know how much better your palate is than mine. Remember to leave a like on your way out of here and subscribe if you're not. Check out the Bourbon Ridge Patreon if you wanna have access to some of these bottles that we talked about. We do sell several bottles on our web store, so check that out too. This has been 2023 wrapped up. Looking forward to 2024. Until next time, I'm Trev Wilson. I will see you guys in the next video.